Hey guys, it's Elena, and this is an updated walkthrough of my Amazing Alcohol Ink brush set for Procreate. I've already done this video once before, but since then I've updated it with multiple new brushes and new functionality within the existing brushes. So I really just wanted to make a new video for everyone who is new to this brush set, and also for those of you who have been using this brush set for a long time, but you want some information about the new brushes and new features that I've just added. So with that said, let's go ahead and start the tutorial. Now the first two things that you need to be aware of is to make sure that your iPad is updated to at least iOS 13. And you can do that in your settings app under um, general and software update. And you can see here your iPad OS version. And as long as it's 13 or higher, then that's fine. Um, otherwise you can, you can download and install there. And then you also need to make sure that Procreate is updated to the latest version, Procreate 5 or higher. And you can do that from your gallery view by tapping the Procreate logo up here. And you can see this is version 5.0.7. So that's fine. As long as it's five or higher, then you should be good to go. So the next thing that you need to do if you have downloaded the brushes is go to your files app. So the files app is an app that is built into your iPad. So it comes with it. So if you don't know that you have it, that's okay. That's pretty common but you can just find it by dragging your finger down on the screen and then typing files. And that should be the first thing that pops up. So this is once you've downloaded from your Safari app, which is your internet app on the iPad, um, it ought to go into under locations, iCloud drive and downloads. And so you can see right here, this is the amazing alcohol ink 2.0 zip and I've named it 2.0 because this is basically a second version it's actually the third version but this is a very substantial update that I've just recently made so I've named it 2.0 so that people who already have the brush set the older version they will know for sure that the new version is installed when you can see that title in your brush set Okay, so if you don't see it in iCloud Drive downloads, you can always check on my iPad as well. Sometimes for whatever reason, it might go in that folder. Okay, so once you have located your zip file on your files app, you can tap it to unzip the file folder. And then it creates a new folder and you tap it to go in. And within this folder, there are a lot of swatches and these are color palettes that you can install in Procreate. And then there is the alcohol ink 2.0 dot brush set. And this is where all of the brushes are. And in your version, there will also be a PDF in this folder, which has all of your brushes on a cheat sheet and all of the relevant links um, to videos and social and all of those things in case you are interested in that. Um, so in order to install these in Procreate, in theory, all that you have to do with both kinds of files is just tap them and then they open up and pro procreate. So I'll show you that first. So I tapped it and it opened up in procreate. So I'm just going to go back to my document and I'm going to look in my swatches and with the swatches, when they load, they go at the bottom. So that's the metallics palette right there. And these are just colors that go well with the metallic brushes. And I'm not going to show you how to load every single one of these swatches because they are, they're all the same, the method of doing it. But I'll just give you a little preview here for anyone who has not bought the set yet. We've got our Ranger colors and Pinata, Copic. And um, these are based on the popular brands of alcohol ink that people use. So um, now on to the brushes, the good stuff. So in theory, this is the same way that you open this. You just tap it and then it opens up in Procreate and actually the brushes go to the top, whereas the swatches go to the bottom for whatever reason. Now this doesn't always work for some reason. Um, so you can see it up here. So for whatever reason, if this doesn't work, if tapping it doesn't open it up, you can also do a different method to install either of these file types. You can hit select and then tap the file, tap share, and then you can um, pick Procreate from this list of apps, 
or if you don't see it here, go to more and then find it in open in procreate. Okay. So with all of that out of the way, I will go ahead and start showing you the brushes. So the first four brushes on this list are metallic brushes and they do not require a clipping mask. They come out looking shiny straight from your brush in any color. And <clears throat> as I said, you can use the metallic brushes, the metallic colors that I have provided in the palette, or you can use any color that you want. And you can see there is a variety of gold and pink. There's a light sort of pearl color. And this black color right here is actually going to come out silver. So that's why I've included that. It's, um, it's a bit counterintuitive because you, if you choose a silver color that looks sort of gray, like this, for instance, that comes out almost white looking with the metallic brushes. So you need a very dark, almost black color to get a silver look. Okay, so I will show you this first one. This is called Metallic Ink Liner. And if you have the older set, this is the same as the old metallic ink splatter. I renamed it because I felt like this one is more of a liner. It didn't really spread out. So now I've actually added a new brush that is a metallic ink splatter that actually spreads out. And I've got my, my gold color, sort of a rose gold selected here. And I'm just going to show you. I've used this brush, this metallic ink liner here. And I really like to use this brush to sort of trace the natural lines um, in the alcohol ink paintings. And it sort of leaves some flakes of glitter along the way as you go. And I'm not hitting this very hard. If I, if I go over an area again and I use more pressure, I'm going to get more flakes and it's going to go bigger. And you can go over and over in the same area and it actually becomes almost white. So in that way, you can actually choose where the light source is coming from, as I've said in other videos. So if the light is coming here, you can see it's very light here and it's sort of bouncing off. Whereas in this area, it's maybe not as bright. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that's the metallic ink liner which adds these beautiful flakes. And that's probably the first brush that you want to start out using if you want to start adding metallics and then you can move on from there. And all four of these metallic brushes work well together. So the metallic ink splatter, this is a new one. And what it does, it's very similar to this, but it spreads. So it's really good for if you don't want to spend a whole lot of time using this liner brush to cover all of this area, if you want a big, huge splash of, um, of metallic flakes right here. You can just take this, this brush and do that very quickly like that. So that is the main difference there. This one just covers more space and saves you some time. And it has all the same sort of properties as all of the other metallic brushes. And you can press for more, um, for more spread out glitter. Okay. And I'm just going to erase that. The next one is called Ultra Fine Glitter. This one has had some updates as well, but it's essentially the same as it was before. And it's similar to the splatter, but it's much smaller pieces of glitter. <clears throat> so this would be like if you had used the, some ink that just has really, really tiny, fine pieces of glitter in it. And once again, if you go over the area multiple times, you get more. And you can use more pressure to spread it out if you just want these tiny little flakes of glitter along the way. Very, very subtle. So yeah, that's how that one looks. All the same properties as the other metallic brushes. And you know what I actually forgot to say, which is very, very important. Um, with all of the metallic brushes, you want them on their own layer. This is actually very, very important. And so if layers are scary to you, this is not something that needs to be complicated at all. All you have to do is hit these two little sheets right next to each other and then hit a plus right here. And all that means is that when you start adding metallics to that layer, they don't interact with what's already on the canvas. Like this is my layer where I have all of my, my, you know, my, my um, pink drawing here. 
And if I put the metallics directly on top of that, they might react in funny ways. They might start looking really white. They might not look metallic. So all you have to remember is go up here, hit these two sheets, hit a plus button, and then on the new layer that it generates, that's where you do your metallics. So that's all you need to know. And I've already got my new layer here for my metallics. Okay, so that was the first three. And here is the foil liner. This one is just a little bit different because it's it's more solid than the, the splatters and the glitter, but it still has this, um, it still has these sort of holes like, like cracked foil would have. And once again, if you go over an area more multiple times, you can get it looking almost white even. You can make it very, very shiny. You can control where the light comes from. Okay. So those are the metallics. And again, the main thing to remember, always use a new layer for metallics. That's the only time you have to mess around with layers with this brush set. Okay, so the next, the next brushes um, section is the color changing brushes. And these brushes have undergone some huge changes in this iteration of the brush set. And that's because I've had some feedback from a lot of people who said that they would like to use it with less color changing or with more control over the color changing. So I've added in um, an additional color changing um, control that you can use. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you that by turning this off and adding a new layer above all of that. So I've got my color changing number one selected. I'm going to go over here to my colors and I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to actually go to the harmony tab. Okay. So I've got, I've got two colors here. I've got my primary color and my secondary color and the color changing brushes use both of the colors you have selected here. So if you really want to control, if you have a certain palette that you're working with and you want the color changing brush to come out in both of those colors, you can have them both selected here in order to do that with using the tilt. And I'll show you in just a minute. So I'm just going to go and pick some colors that I want to use for this. I'm going to start with a dark green and so that's selected here. And then I've got a reddish color selected here. I think I'm actually going to turn that into sort of a gold. So I select it. I'm going to select my sort of orangish gold right here. So now you can see I've got two colors selected. I've got my, my green and my orange. Okay. So I'm going to start um, drawing with this brush and I'm just going to hold it naturally. And the color that is currently selected, which is this orange is going to be the one that comes out with some very slight variations, but not quite as crazy as it was before. Okay. Now I'm going to tilt the pen and you can see that the green actually comes out when I do that. So if you want to have both of those colors in your piece, you can do this without lifting your pen at all. You can tilt as you go and then the colors come out and you can keep doing this without lifting your pen and decide where the color changes. So all of these color palettes are actually um, arranged in such a way that if you pick two from the same color palette, they should look pretty good together. And you can control how much of a variation there is between the two colors. Like if I chose this green, for instance, and then I chose um, next to it, if I choose this blue, oops, see, I just put them both in the same. Okay. I have the blue, I have the blue chosen. I'm going to go back to here and then I'm going to pick the green. So now I've got the blue and the green. They're really not very much different. I'll just show you with a different brush this time. So you won't see a huge change between these two, but a little bit. That was really big. I'm going to bring it down a bit. So if you don't want a huge change, that's how you can control it. And another trick to do with, with these um, brushes is to use the color harmony. So if you have a certain color that you want to use, for instance, maybe this purple, um, it automatically chooses something completely the other side. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to go with this sort of peach color and blue. Those look really nice together. 
So it doesn't automatically put those colors up here for whatever reason. So what you can do is you can have a palette down here. This is one I've already made, but with your palettes, you can just hit plus to make an empty palette. And then if you have a palette down here and you have this one selected, go in there and put it on the palette and then hit this one and put that on the palette. And so now you have both of those colors and they're still not selected up here. So I'm going to go back and put that one in. So now I have both of those colors and I know for a fact that they are complementary. So um, this is this is a whole nother lesson actually, but this is pretty cool new feature of Procreate 5. Anyway, so now I've got these two colors on here and I'll show you with another brush. I'm going to go ahead and go with that one. So that looks really good as well together, I think. You can get some really nice combinations where you get to be the boss of which colors are coming out of your color changing brushes. All right. And all of these that are called color changing have this tilt feature. So it's color changing one through 10 and you can, you can do this with any of them. So, it's just a really fun sort of feature that people were asking for that I really wanted to give people to be able to change the colors on their own without having it be super random, but still having a lot of fun color change going on. So yeah, you can do that with any of these color changing brushes. Or if you don't want to have, if you just want it to be one color and you don't want to have any of the secondary color, just don't tilt your pencil. And then you have a very slight variation that is naturally built into this brush, but um, you won't have any, you know, additional colors added in other than a few lightly complementary colors like this. Okay, so those are the color changing brushes. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I hope it's clear. And I really tried to base that on all the feedback that I was getting on my Instagram post. So the next uh, set of, of brush types is the texture inkers. These are a lot, um, these, are, these are coming out with a texture that um, is pre-made and a sort of blobby shape. And there's like a very slight color variation in this, but not, not a whole lot. And all three of these are the same, oops, the same format. And they don't, you'll notice that they don't actually blend with each other when you go like this. And that's because it's very limited what you can actually do with brushes that do blend. So I have a whole selection of blender brushes that I'll show you in a moment. But those are the texture inkers. Okay. And by the way, this canvas is 11 by 14 inches because I was having a lot of uh, questions about um, making the brushes a little bit bigger for people who are working with print. Um, so, so this is, I'm showing you this on a bigger canvas than I did in the previous video because I've enlarged a whole lot of these brushes so that they work really well on, um, stuff that you're preparing for print. And it's, it's 11 by 14 inches, 300 DPI. Okay. So the next two ones I want to show you are the pressure inker and the flat inker. And the pressure inker puts down sort of a blobby shape and it's a good as a starter if you're going to add more effects to it. And as you keep going over it, it gets lighter. So this is a really good starter brush before you start doing blending effects and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And the flat inker is very similar, except it doesn't get lighter when you press. And the edges are a lot crisper, which is nice. If you want this edge showing, then this is a good one to start with. So the next one is a new brush that I've added with this update. It's called Smoky. It was another one that was requested. And it's a brush that has a bit of a special thing in it where um, it's dark, but then it starts getting lighter as you go over it multiple times without lifting the pen. So this is really good for a very moody look or if you want something in the background. This is really good for that. You can almost, it can almost just like erase itself and it has a really fun, like meditative quality to it. So I really enjoy that, that brush and I hope you guys like it. The next brushes that we have are the splatters. There's four in this category. The first one is called color splatter. And this one is just adding drops 
to the canvas. Um, this is made from actual alcohol ink drops. So I've, um, I've added a bit of pressure sensitivity in this now so that it can go bigger with the pressure. And this is meant to look like if you have, if you have a paintbrush and you're hitting it like this and putting the alcohol, the, um, the ink on the page, that's what it looks like in real life with alcohol ink. So that's the color splatter. The next one is the white splatter. And actually it's, it's called white splatter because it's, it's, um, really good for white. I'll show you with this bottom turned on actually. Okay. So the only difference here is that this one is a little bit more solid and that looks better with the white, but you do still have to select white in your color palette before you use it. And so that's how this one looks. And again, this would be like dropping, um, isopropyl alcohol onto the page instead of dropping ink because it erases what it falls onto and then it sort of spreads outward into these nice circles. Oops. So the next one after that is called dense splatter. So whereas these two are meant to look like splattering with a paintbrush, um, this is actually meant to look like splattering with a toothbrush, which is a lot denser. So I'm just gonna choose a color for that and show you how that looks. This one can get really crazy really fast, which is kind of fun. It's got a little bit of a color variation <clears throat> within it, and you can do some fun um, variations within to just make some really fun effects. And the next one is called the Mister, and this one is meant to look like if you have a spray bottle with isopropyl in it, that it has sort of a blurring effect when it comes out onto the canvas. So that's what this one does. And I've got that orange selected. I'm going to just go ahead and take the purple and show you what this looks like. So instead of just being drops, it's just like a blur. And this is exactly how alcohol ink actually um, reacts. So like I said with my other video that I made, um, I'm actually really happy about this brush. I use it all the time and I feel like it's a really good brush for adding texture. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna show you on the layer because it wasn't interacting. See there, it actually interacts with what's on that layer. So I've got this purple on there already and it's just like spreading it out in this pattern. Okay. And I have a blender brush that does this without adding any color further down. So the next one is called Disappearing Ink. And this is one that can almost basically erase itself and it's a lot of fun. It's very meditative to work with this one. So this is really good if you want to um, make a, a drop and then erase part of it and then just sort of control how the edge looks by easing up on the pressure. And this is really good to add over top. Um, I'll show you in a moment, but it's really good to add it as sort of like an edge here over top of one of the blender brushes that I'll show you in a moment. Okay, so the next set of brushes here are brush strokes. So, oops, I'm gonna have to plug this in. Sorry guys, I need a new iPad. Okay, so <clears throat> these have had some major upgrades since the old version. The blended brush stroke is the one that you can use like a paintbrush. So when you use alcohol ink with a paintbrush, it can come out um, in kind of weird and wonderful ways with um, wobbly edges and it pushes everything else out of the way and it just has kind of a meditative quality. And you can make some really cool ribbon effects and I have actually a video about this that I will, I'll put a little pop up about that above. Um, but this, this is also much bigger than it used to be because I'm on this big canvas. That's as big as it goes on this big canvas but you can make it much smaller as well. I have a wave tutorial as well that I've made using this, this brush. And if you found it difficult to use in previous versions, it should be a lot easier to use now. And the main thing to remember with this is that you should go fairly slowly and deliberately and don't just go crazy because it goes kind of funny on the edges. I mean, on the turns, it goes funny. Okay. So that was the blended brush stroke. The static, the static brush stroke is very similar, but it does not blend. And sometimes that might be something that you want. So this just leaves 
a stroke with this this nice subtle edge here but it doesn't blend you see that so that's the only difference between those two the next brush is called xl blended stroke and this one is brand new with the new version and i'm really happy about this i'm just going to show you it's it's basically a really a really big brush stroke that doesn't erase what is under it it actually just blends it and sort of disperses it a little bit which is really what alcohol ink is all about it takes what's on the canvas and disperses it so i'm going to show you on this layer where i already have this purple um, i've got purple selected i think i'm gonna go with a different color a sort of peachy neutral color instead just to show some contrast so i'm going to take the brush it's already all the way up and i'm just gonna take it over top of what i've already done here and so you can see it doesn't erase what's down there but it does blend it quite a lot i'm actually going to do a different color now i'm going to go back to burgundy color and just show you what we can do with this so the more that you blend the more interesting it gets so you can see it sort of disperses what's underneath it looks makes it look more liquidy i think i'll show you a little bit more on this new layer here so if you do it by itself it just looks like a brush stroke but then as you start to layer it it sort of disperses these lines underneath and just makes it all look very very watery which is really a lot of fun and especially as you add more colors it just gets more and more interesting oops and this one works really well with the uh, liquefied blender which i'll show you in a moment a little bit too dark there okay I could keep going with this one for a long time it's very meditative but that is the XL blended stroke okay so the next one after that is called circle dropper and it used to be called a longer name and I've just shortened it to circle dropper because I feel like that is really the function of this of this uh, brush so it's it's it works in sort of a similar way to the one I just showed you but it's um, it doesn't really have this same blending effect it just completely covers up what's below it so it doesn't have these sort of wispiness below it. So if you really, if you want something that just completely covers up what's below, use this one like that. Or the main function of it would be to drop circles. And that's why I call it circle dropper because when you are working with alcohol ink and you take a paintbrush again and you have just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or ink on the tip and then you just tap, it goes, spreads out into this beautiful circle and so this is very characteristic of alcohol ink. So what you can do with this brush is use very small circles to like make this ring around a really nice circle like that. And it can push everything else out of the way. So it's really very realistic to alcohol ink. And you can use it over top of itself again and the more that you the 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 pressure that you apply here can really transform that circle into something fairly irregular and just kind of interesting so just small circles vary your pressure and see what you can get with that it's really fun and the next one after that is called infinity rings it's another one where i've shortened the name and it's similar to the circle dropper except it doesn't blend so it's kind of like the blended brush stroke and the static static brush stroke so i'll just show you real quick how that works and i've named it infinity rings let me just get this out of the way i've named it infinity rings because you can make these really nice um, sort of flower shapes with it if you take it over and over on top of with smaller and smaller circles like this you may have seen it pe when people work with real alcohol ink they can make these sort of flower shapes and I do actually have a, a tutorial on how to make these as well but anyway you get the idea that's a really fun technique that you can do with these infinity rings and that's 
why I've called it that. Okay, so the next two brushes are called the Ink Pool Edger and the Color Clone Ink Pool Edger, and they work very similarly. Um, the Ink Pool Edger is meant to add some dark edges to um, so to the, the your piece so that it looks like the ink is sort of welling up in that area and it's directional so oops I'm taking it in the wrong direction so the direction you go in will determine which direction the ink is coming out so I'm going in this direction the ink is coming out over here if I go in the other direction the ink comes out on the other side I hope that makes sense so this is really good underneath of the metallics for instance it can look really good and um, it just can help add this realistic texture to your piece. The Color Clone Ink Pool Edger works the same way, except that it does not add color to the canvas. If you take it over here, nothing happens. So it only picks up color from where you start. So, oops. so it's picked up this color where I started. And it can, be, it can be a little bit more subtle if you're working on a very light area then this is the one you probably want to go with just to add some little bits of subtle oops, subtle texture to your piece to make it look like the ink is pooling up there. Okay, so those are the ink pool edgers. And from here on out, <clears throat> all of the rest of these brushes are blender brushes. They do not add anything to the canvas. All that they do is interact with what is already on the canvas specifically in the layer that you're working on so if if you are using these and you don't know why nothing's happening it's because you need to make sure you're on the right layer here so the next one called which is called liquify blender i really love this one this is a brand new one that i have made for this new update and this is meant to look like the liquify effect that you can do in procreate over here and it's just much more subtle. So I've got my liquify blender selected and I'm gonna take it across this edge right here and show you what I mean. So I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that in the video, but it's adding a bleed to this edge. And I'm not really shaking my hand very much, but I'm not really taking care to make it not shake. And that's where all of this nice variation is coming from. So that can make it look like it's like bleeding on the edge. And this is something that happens with real alcohol ink. You can also use it on a much bigger scale. Like this. And then if you want it even more blurry, you can go over it again. And you can keep doing this. You can use it within the, the piece, like up here, if you want to make this part look more blendy. So it has this sort of dispersing effect that Liquify does, except that it's it's just a bit more controlled than that. And it doesn't take as, you don't have to individually go in here and liquefy every little thing. Okay, so that is one that can just really blend things nicely as well, if you just keep using it. Okay. So moving on to the next blender. It's called Heavy Bleed Blender and this is probably my favorite blender brush that I have in this set and it's really good for, you can use it to take some of the um, some of the ink and just sort of bleed it outwards like this or you can use it to blend hard edges within your piece. You can use it to um, very carefully mix colors together and this one is one that you want to use slowly and deliberately and it takes the color in the direction that you go so this is one i always love to use if there is just a little bit too much texture too many hard lines or a little bit too too digital looking anywhere in my piece i will just take this brush and I will run that over there and just make it a lot softer. And this is a good one that um, if you're using a blow dryer brush, which I'll show you down below, when you're blowing the ink in one direction, it gets a hard edge in the direction you're blowing, but in the direction where you're not blowing on the other side, 
it has a really nice slow fade and so that's what this blender brush is meant to have it's meant to make it into this really nice slow fade like that okay the next one is called continuous blender and this is a new one but it's very similar to the heavy bleed blender in that it it does the same sort of blending but it does not fall off so this one eventually falls off like that which is something that you want if you're just trying to make a slow fade like that but if you want to just keep blending if you have a really big piece that you're working on and you don't want to have to lift up and go back down again you can just use this one because it continuously keeps blending like that okay so that's the continuous blender the next one is called streaky edge bleed and this one is similar except it doesn't move the ink as much as these other ones do so if you just want sort of a messy fade on the edge like that you can see it's got more streaks in it and it doesn't move as much um, as much of the color over so that's just sort of another version of that slow seep if you want it a bit messier a bit streakier <clears throat> this is the ring blender and that is one that you can use it's meant to be used on the edge of your piece um, because if you if you for instance if you put some isopropyl right here um, it would eventually start to creep into the piece and depending on the humidity in the room it would sort of add sort of a, a faded ring right here so this is what this brush is meant to do you, you take it on the edge and make sort of a ring and that's supposed to look like as if there were isopropyl sort of um, leaking into this area so moving on to the um, we just did the ring blender we're going to go ahead and look at the airbrush and I think we've pretty much filled this layer so I'm going to turn this one off and go back to this other layer that I had created down here and the airbrush is another blender brush where you can pull the ink outwards and when you use an airbrush with alcohol ink it tends to be a bit smoother so that is the idea with this and it's just a way to sort of pull it out in more of a smooth stroke like this if you do a quick little flick it actually looks like a flower petal so the next one is a spray blender and this one is very similar to the mister brush which is up here and the difference is that it does not add any color it only combines what is already on the canvas so I'm gonna choose I'm gonna start using it from an area where there's a couple different colors and you can see that it sort of combines those colors and it spreads them outward in this really kind of blurry um, sort of way and that one is all the way up but let's turn it down and I'll show you how it looks a little bit lower whoops there we go so you can add some interesting texture along areas like this without using the brush um, all that big if you just use it kind of small you can add some really interesting texture to only certain areas or you can start on the white background or black background Oops, let's go take it a bit bigger and then you can splash some white up onto something instead like this so that's the spray blender and so down here we have two different hair dryer brushes this is the first one that was originally in the set which has some improved features now and then I have a second one that I have made for this update and if you're not familiar with alcohol ink artwork people often use hair dryers um, like this one or just like a regular hair dryer that you use on your hair and um, they blow the ink and the isopropyl alcohol to get sort of an interesting um, liquidy effect that has a lot of hard edges in the direction that you blow and so that's what th these are supposed to do so I'm just gonna flip this around so I have a lot of space so here's what you would do um, this is hair dryer number one you just sort of blow it outward and you can get sort of a nice um, a nice hard edge which is very typical of alcohol ink and what I like to do with this brush is I blow 
I blow it outwards with this nice hard edge and then I do it with less pressure um, the second time so that it doesn't have a hard edge and I just keep going in the same direction with less and less pressure each time and going um, not as far each time as well. So if you feel like the edges are really hard, just keep going and then ease up on the pressure to make things more gradual. And it's just fun to experiment with this brush and some to get some different looks with it. So that's the first hairdryer brush, which is a little bit changed from the first version of it, but it's essentially the same brush. And the hairdryer number two, it has um, a, just a different sort of texture that comes out, but the concept is very similar, like this. You can use it the same way to make it look like it's being blown outward. And um, it's also really interesting, this one especially, is really interesting to do a negative effect like this to lighten the, um, the artwork that you have instead of blowing it outwards. So you can have some really interesting wispy effects on the inside this way. And this is of course pressure sensitive as well. So that's a new brush, really happy about that one. So this is the heat gun and this is the same heat gun brush that I've had in the set for this whole time. And, um, I called it heat gun because people use a heat gun with um, with alcohol ink as well as hair dryer, and the difference is that it's hotter. So because it's hotter, you get you get some really um, fine ripples because it dries so fast with the heat gun. So um, what I like to use the heat gun for, as I've shown in other videos, is to make some really nice edges, and it's directional as well. So um, if you are using it and you don't like the way it's looking, you can just switch directions and things change up. But you can actually keep, depending on where you start from, you can keep going and get some interesting ripples within the same brush stroke with this. Oops. And you can just sort of play with it. It's very intuitive and just see what direction it takes you and just get some interesting ripples effects and always sort of a circular motion oops with this and if you feel like it's it's getting too light just drag the ink over from a darker area instead and that way you can you can control how it reacts so that's a really fun one to just kind of go crazy with The next one is called Drip Bleed, and it's basically uh, when you are blowing the ink and the isopropyl in a certain direction, um, it will sometimes go out in these little tendrils. And so that's what this is meant to look like. And you just drag it outward from your artwork and you can sort of slow it down at the end if you want this to look even more drippy. So yeah, that's what that is meant to do. And then these last two, called Add Ripple Texture and Add Ink Depth Texture. These have been improved from the previous versions as well. And these will, like all the other blender brushes now, they don't put anything on the canvas, but they put it, if there's already something there, then they will put, um, they will put this texture down on top. And these are not, these are meant to just sort of add some interest to something that is already on the canvas. I'm just gonna, Turn the gold back on because I like it. Okay, so I've got my add ripple texture. I'm just gonna see how it looks along this line down here. So you can see that it just adds a little bit of texture. It doesn't add a lot, but it makes it look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more realistic. And especially on the darker areas, it will be more visible because and if you go off the edges, that's the nice thing about the fact that it doesn't add um, anything where there is not already been a drawing made because you can't color outside the lines. So that's nice. So yeah, that's the add um, ink depth texture. Sorry, that's the add ripple texture. And now I'll show you the add ink depth texture. It works the same way. It just adds a really nice 
sort of texture here. And this came from a painting that I made, this texture that just had this really tiny bit of amazing texture right in the middle. Um, but I, I loved it so much I made a couple of brushes out of it. So I really love how that looks. So that was the walkthrough and I hope that it was helpful. If you have any questions about anything at all, be sure and send me a message or just write a comment. And um, I'm really happy to help you out if you're still having trouble with anything. If you um, want any tutorials on any particular subject, then you can also let me know in a comment. Um, and I do have a whole lot more uh, tutorials planned with these brushes and just demos and speed painting kind of videos. So um, stay tuned for that and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, I hope to see you guys again really soon.